Hey there, in today's video, I wanna share with you my three biggest takeaways from the California Dressage Society Judges Symposium that I participated in last week. Basically, it was such a great event that went from training level through the Grand Prix. There was a panel of four judges, so it was Mike Osinki, Melissa Creswick, Hilda Gurney and Jan Curtis, and they gave all the riders feedback on their tests. We learned so much about what the judge is looking for, the judge's perspective, how they're trained, how the tests are designed. It was really an awesome experience. It was freezing cold and rainy, so I was trying to hide from the rain and stay as dry as possible. I, I took Kensington, he's my seven-year-old, he did fourth level test too. And I also did the Grand Prix with Natasha. It was a little bit of a challenge because as I was riding the test, they were on the microphone giving me scores and comments. So I had to really focus on staying concentrated in the moment, not getting overly concerned about their comments, but it was such a fun experience. I was so proud of my horses. Kensington can be a little bit of a shy horse and he did so well. There were about 350 spectators. So I'm gonna post a little bit of my rides at the end of this video. The audio is not perfect. You can hear what they're saying, it's not perfect. If you want to see the full rides, be sure to check me out on Patreon. I post a lot of behind the scenes stuff on Patreon, so I will pop the link up here if you're interested in joining on Patreon. The first and biggest and most important takeaway that I had from the entire symposium, which was ride the horse you have and it's not all about the score. This is super, super important to remember because every horse is different, every rider is different, we all have a different background, we have a different journey, and it's really, really important not to compare yourself or your score to the other riders and the other horses, but just focus on doing your personal best and on developing that partnership and that harmony with your horse. And the judges really do value that. They like to see when you have communication, when you have subtle aids, when they can tell that there's a partnership with your horse, that is really, really important to these judges. So just remember that, that it's all about just riding the horse you have, doing the best you can with the horse you have. The second biggest takeaway is focus on your position. So pretty much every single rider, they were talking about their position. Get your heels down, take your leg off the horse, quieter hands, hands forward, don't pull on your horse's mouth. Judges really like to see harmony and they like to see subtle aids. The hard part of dressage is getting expression and doing all these complicated movements with very, very small and very subtle aids. That's one thing that I'm definitely focused on a lot this year is my position, riding with more subtle aids and trying to get more out of my horse with doing less. That is the art of dressage, is when your aids are very subtle, when you're able to just sit there and it looks like you're not doing anything, but your horse is doing a lot. So focus on your position. The third thing that was super interesting is that judges judge to a standard. So they, one thing that they always take into account is the quality of the gates. That is going to affect your score. Another thing which was super interesting to learn from Mike Osinki is when I was doing the Grand Prix test with Natasha, I had a mistake in my canter half pass zigzag. So you do three, six, six, three, and I had, she changed one stride after I asked, so I had a count of seven instead of six. So that is a mistake. And immediately it puts me down to a five. Mike Osinki said that this is a, what they call a firewall. If there's a mistake in a movement, you are at a five, regardless of the quality of your horse, regardless of anything else. And so that's important to kind of understand. Sometimes I think we forget the judge's perspective and the standards that they have to judge to. It's also important to know that they have the same standard, whether you're a professional or an amateur or whatever breed your horse you're riding. So whether you're riding Vallegro and you're Charlotte Dujardin 
or you're at a little backyard show in the middle of nowhere, a seven should be a seven. And that is how the judges are taught so that the sport can be as subjective as possible. It's not an easy thing. I don't envy the position of the judges. The judges also talked a lot about the way that they designed the tests and also the way that they've changed the tests this year. Every four years, they make changes to the tests. One of the biggest changes is in training level test three, they went, it used to be a three loop serpentine that went all the way across the arena. They changed that back to the shallow loop serpentine. They felt that the three loop serpentine was too difficult, that horses weren't scoring well enough on it, and it made the test too long. So the way that the tests are designed is they're really designed to help the rider to have a good experience with their horse, to train their horse properly up the levels. And so because of that, the, the test designers make some changes, they try it out for four years, and then they get together again and they collaborate on, okay, this worked, this didn't work, let's change this, let's not change this. So it's really interesting to get the judge's perspective as well as being a rider and a trainer and to understand what it's like for them to sit there and to give scores and to try to be subjective. I don't envy their position. It is not an easy feat, but I'm really grateful to the California Dressage Society, to all of the judges and all of the organizers. It was a great experience. I learned a lot. It was a wonderful experience for my horses to go out there and do the test in front of that many people. So yeah, thank you. I'm gonna put in some clips here from the judges and from the rides. I hope you guys enjoy it. Be sure to give me a thumbs up if you like my channel. A lot of you guys aren't subscribed. So if you like my channel, please subscribe. We're trying to get to 100,000. And I hope you guys enjoy these video clips. Center line in the half house. Start swell, balance, falls to shoulders, seven. Express it, more relaxation, eight. More engagement, steadier alignment. Coming up to extended, which includes the transition at the end, line change, which should be on the diagonal. Quality counter could go more. Expressive change. Slight swing. Secure could be straighter than show of We know it's difficult, but we try to hold to a stick. 